Hello and welcome my Taurus friends. This is Jennifer from Mystic Star. I want to thank you so much for spending time with me today and watching my video. This is going to be my weekly group reading for January 5th through the 11th for my Taurus friends. This is a new and exciting step for me, opposed to just doing daily card draws where I briefly talk about that one card, we're going to really look at and explore the week ahead. This is going to give my friends a better understanding and outlook of that week and how to really overcome some of those obstacles and challenges that we're going to kind of face throughout that week. For this reading, I will be using the Tarot Draconis deck and then I'm also going to be adding in, of course, with the Dragon Oracle. Like always, there are links below to both these Dragon Tastic decks, so should they speak to you, you can go check them out for yourselves. All right, my Taurus friends, let's see what the week holds. What can my Taurus friends expect for the week of January 5th through the 11th? And that's the dark blue galactic dragon. Helps you listen to that voice of the universe. And it's that voice of the universe that's going to make an amazing impact for you. Those higher vibrational beings have a lot that they want to share. There's a lot of information that we're going to need and that's going to help us on our journey. The blue galactic dragon will help reduce some of the barriers you've been having in connecting in and really receiving these messages. He's a fantastic support when it comes to that connection and message receiving. Let's get some more information. What card symbolizes the week of January 5th through the 11th for my Taurus friends? Ooh, we have jumpers. Okay, I love this deck. Not only are the cards beautiful and amazing, they don't have a funny glare. I don't get as much glare back from the picture and you guys can truly embrace and appreciate the artwork. So we have the Emperor, the fourth card in the Major Arcana. And this really highlights, it's a fantastic card to follow the Blue Galactic Dragon. This is what it's going to feel like, having this amazing being just helping that information in, supporting you, right behind you, really embracing you, your gifts, your abilities, and accentuating and amplifying those messages. Then with it jumped the High Priestess. Again, that connection to the universe, that gateway. The High Priestess is a gateway card. She's a gatekeeper. She's a gatekeeper to Torah, which is the universal knowledge. Are you guys getting the bigger picture here, Taurus? We're really looking at that information coming in. If you've seen some of the past videos, the um, 2020 mapping videos, or even the January overlook videos, that forecasting video, those readings all kind of started saying the same message. 2020 is a foundational year for us. We're starting to get those skills, ability, and knowledge from the universe to start those baby steps to preparing ourselves for 2030. The universe really wants to start to kick us into gear because it knows we like to sidetrack ourselves. So we have the ability to start that foundation. So should we start to take a really sharp turn here or there? we have that foundation to return to. So with that support and structure and strength of the Emperor connected in with the High Priestess, that conduit, that support to the universe, in conjunction with that dark blue galactic dragon, those messages will come in fast and furious. Those messages will help guide you to different key pieces and intersections in the upcoming future. And the third card? <laughs> Sorry, I laugh because the cards are being very, very clear for you. This is the Hermit, the ninth card in the Major Arcana. That inner journey, that inner work. All these messages 
will strengthen those foundations and really help gain that guidance you want. So that taking this time this week, my Taurus friends, in embracing these amazing major arcana. So this week, we're really looking at life shifts here. We've got three major arcana and they're fantastic arcana that don't usually work together. The hermit and the high priestess do. Usually the high priestess and emperor are at odds with each other because the emperor is more that societal energy, that societal structure, where he is working hand in hand with the high priestess because he's got the galactic blue dragon right above him, supporting and guiding him. I'm getting chills here, guys. This is fantastic. Let's get into the week a bit more. What does the beginning of the week hold for my Taurus friends? The Queen of Pentacles. She's a beautiful card, that Mother Earth card. We're looking at doing a lot of spiritual and personal growth, that inner peace. It is going to be really important to ensure that we are paying attention to that physical aspect as well. It's really easy to get overwhelmed and swept up in this amazing energy and hyper-focused on certain topics. We need to keep a balance and we need to be able to not only nurture and ground ourselves in our physical body, but also paying attention to our physical self, our surroundings, our environment, what's happening for us right now in this realm. Also ensuring we do have the emperor here, like I said, that societal energy. We do need to nurture and share our energies with those physical demands. Work, those chores, those tasks that we have in the physical realm. Those need to be done on top of this because if we destabilize ourselves by neglecting one aspect of our lives, we are not able to truly embrace this energy. All right, let's go to the middle of the week. What does the middle of the week hold for my Taurus friends? What a fantastic card, the Four of Wands. The middle of the week, you're gonna see some movement. You're really gonna feel good. That connection in is gonna be at a high. Really embracing and celebrating, not only with the dragons, but all the high vibrational beings, your guides, your guardians. It gives you that opportunity to see that energetic shift so those connections, again, come in stronger for you. The Four of Wands talks about a rite of passage. The middle of the week, you're really going to see that. Tensions are going to release a little bit. You may be able, and many of you are going to be able, to calm your ego enough to start receiving those messages. It's a fantastic card to have, especially in the middle of the week. We have a tendency to get to that middle of the week burnout. We're gonna see a shift there. Now we do have double fours, the four of wands and the emperor. In angel messages, when you're looking at that double four, you're looking at the angels reminding you, ensure that you are grounded and give yourself time and energy to work on and create that foundational support. So like I said at the beginning of this video, we're starting to build that structure, that support system, that root system, if you will, at the very beginning of January. We're starting off day one. Like I said, the universe already knows we get excited about shiny, fun objects that will take us off course. The universe, when it can get us very focused, will help celebrate, nurture, and take us a little bit further than we need to so that we are able to make some amazing shifts and supports in our lives. The more supported and stable we feel, that foundational support, the easier it is to connect in, the higher our vibration. 
that's when we start to see that connection piece strengthen. However, we see that connection piece strengthen. We also have that manifestation skills increase and improve. Raising our vibration really is a win-win situation and we're really being able to acknowledge that more as more and more people start to really awaken and embrace this amazing energy that has been with us forever. Let's go to the end of the week. What can my Taurus friends expect for the end of the week? The Three of Wands. This looks a little bit kind of daunting and scary. However, it's the Three of Wands. I always tell my tarot students not to start off with these amazing decks to start off with the Rider weight that these amazing decks are based off of. Even though we've got this fire and lava all over and this dragon that's looking back going, yeah, I just did that. The Three of Wands is a journey card. This is a fire dragon. To him, this is a sea of amazingness. So what we're looking at at the end of the week is us being able to not only embrace this new stage, we've passed our rite of passage, that gatekeeper, if you will. And now we're ready to start. We're ready to rock on our journey. The Three of Wands the original card, it's much calmer than this beautiful dragon card. There's two wands, a man has stepped through, so that rite of passage, and is holding a third wand, and he's going. He's getting himself moving one step in front of the other. And that's what the end of the week is going to bring. Now we started off the week with this amazing earthy energy of the queen. The middle to the latter part of the week you're going to really find that your solar plexus is ignited. It's your third chakra and it really is your support system for your courage and determination. Going through the rite of passage and starting that journey is going to take some courage and determination. And let's be honest, you've got some amazing supports in this journey and as you start out the blue galactic dragon, you've got the emperor, the high priestess, and the hermit. Don't forget, that rite of passage, it's an internal passage, that connection to self. So this week offers you some amazing pieces, my Taurus friends. So let's look at those obstacles, because let's be honest, this all sounds easy peasy. There's gonna be obstacles. We have to work for what we want because when it's handed to us, we don't appreciate it as much. So what is the main obstacle that my Taurus friends are going to have to face in the week of January 5th through the 11th? He's the King of Swords. Now the King of Swords is connected into the Emperor. He's the earthly embodiment of this archetype. The King of Swords is the knowledge keeper. Kings are the most fully developed personality of that suit with the most power and control. What your biggest obstacle that you're going to face this week, my Taurus friends, is overthinking things. We like to analyze and think about stuff and talk ourselves out of what it is we can truly do. And that's what the King of Swords is going to do for you. It's one of those Achilles heels that our society and culture has. We can talk ourselves out of and belittle and undermine our thoughts, feelings, and abilities due to negative self-talk. This week, like I said, it's not an uncommon alliance between the Emperor and the High Priestess. However, this week, it is an alliance. They're right beside each other. That blue galactic dragon has shifted the energies of the emperor. Another piece I teach my tarot students is that sing that single card may mean one thing. However, when you start to get them into a, a spread or together, 
you can alter that card's meaning between the galactic girt dragon and the high priestess they have swayed and swooned the emperor into an ally the king of swords has held fast to his beliefs and that structural societal support that society says right now that we must follow the rules and the rules state we can't do what we're about to do well the rules were written a long time ago by people who wanted to create more power for themselves more and more people are now using the critical thinking skills that the Emperor and the King of Swords has taught us and we're going to use that amazing knowledge and skill to our benefit additionally science is now catching up to the woo-woo and we are being proven right and some of us think it's funny we're not being smug about it we're not saying yeah we know we're just like yeah and there's much more so let's look at this week a little bit more in depth let's get into these obstacles a little bit what is the main obstacle that my Taurus friends are going to be challenged with at the beginning of the week well there you go we're back into the swords that overthinking that analysis that negative self-talk we are really going to hear from our ego because the ego is going to align itself with the king of swords to say are you kidding you can't do that you can't talk to beings that don't exist they believe only in storybooks it's about, again, taking the skills we've learned from the King of Swords and saying, actually, they do exist and I can prove it because you're going to be able to start to connect in with them, especially when we slow down. I've said this in past videos, high vibrational beings don't always use language. Our language is very rudimentary for them. So being mindful of those messages similar to the four the double fours here slowing down and being observant they will leave you messages hidden in plain sight it's going to be really kind of outsmarting and outwitting your ego let's look at the middle of the week what obstacle will my Taurus friends face the middle of the week And that's the fifth card in the Major Arcana. This, a yet another gatekeeper, is the Hierophant. Now the Hierophant can be that connection to our higher source, like God, Goddess, Source, whatever you want to label the universe as. However, he is also connected into the church. Those very structured organizations usually he walks hand in hand with the emperor they have similar views the woo woo is not okay because that's against the bible which again i'm going to go back to was created by people who wanted to control the power so it's going to be again connecting in back to this king it's going to be that societal views those important community supports that you have your family your friends who are like this is crazy and it's the people who are not understanding what this process is yet that will give you the hardest challenge I'm gonna say we've already got a five on the table we need to take the high road um, my team is screaming that we need to be very careful because we are looking at some positive supports they just don't understand we don't need to educate them. We just need to acknowledge their view. However, keeping in mind what is working in your life. Through showing them, through role modeling and displaying all this amazingness that's happening in your life, they'll come around. That high vibrational energy will attract them back to you 
and they'll want to know your secrets. How are you doing this? And it's all through that ability to raise your vibration and connect in and receive that guidance and support. We just need to be very mindful that this is going to be an obstacle and that we do really need to take that high road. All right, let's go on to the end of the week. What challenge will my Taurus friends face at the end of the week? The Eight of Swords. It's hard to see this as a sword, but that's it, down here. So the Eight of Swords talks about that negative lower vibrational energy. We go back to a bit of that negative self-talk and defeatist energy. That will be brought up, but also your ego is going to start to be really hitting you where it counts, those low blows those past experiences where you have those lower vibrational pains and, and heartache, they're gonna throw those up. Really bringing and accentuating and amplifying those feelings. The original Eight of Swords has a woman who's all bound up and blindfolded with swords all around her. Your ego wants to really isolate you and bring you down. It's going to really connect in to the messages of those that don't understand and to the messages of the, the king of sorts that this is crazy, why would you be able to do this? A lot of what we're dealing with my Taurus friends over the next week is going to really be those core belief systems that are created by society, our church, our schools, our parents, our grandparents, the families, the community supports that are based on quote-unquote traditional values. And those traditional values are going to be hitting you every step along the way. Identifying them for what they are. And again, I'm just saying take the high road. Choosing to shift your vibration. So when these things happen, you can be very conscious and you're able to overcome them, not only through guidance from your higher vibrational beings, you can choose to focus your energies on important aspects of your life. Those important pieces that are gonna really amplify and strengthen that support system that we're trying to create right now. So that's a lot, I know. And it's kind of fun, because when I used to do the one card a day, I always felt that I was missing pieces and I tried to connect them in. However, not everybody was able to hit every card. So I figured this is a better way of doing it. Now, I get to add in blessings too because I'm big on that high vibration because I say it at least, you know, at least 100 times per video on the importance of really focusing in on that positive. So let's focus in on that positive. What blessing can my Taurus friends embrace for the beginning of the week? Wait a card, jump. Oh, it's a fantastic dragon. The alpha dragon. Harness the divine masculine power of creation. Connecting right back into that emperor energy. That stability, that support, that strength. We always, you hear a lot more about the divine feminine. Oh, the goddess, that feminine energy. Embrace your feminine. We also need to embrace our masculine. That masculine is very much connected in to that root and solar plexus chakras. We're looking at that stability, that strength. We know, and I've said this in lots, lots of videos, that foundation we're going to be creating is going to really help us to connect into that divine and help us along our journey into what is to come. That really, literally, I, I, I see Bob the Builder. We need to start to build it. Most of us learnt our construction capabilities from our dad. And there are some that did learn them from their moms and they, that's fantastic. However, it's been societally, can we go back to the society, 
a male role. And that's really what we need to embrace right now, especially in, in the beginning of the week. And we also have a balance because we've got this amazing, very feminine, divine feminine energy. She's very much that mother earth, that mother goddess. And now we have the masculine. Balance will be key for the beginning part of the month. We want to focus in on that creation and fortification of this structure we're building. And then also that nurturing energy. Nurturing our physical self and our physical world while we start to really make some shifts in our emotional and spiritual self. Let's go into the middle of the week. What blessing can my Taurus friends embrace for the middle of the week? We're starting with the fire. The fire dragon burns up that lower energies around you. Now, any of the dragons that you come across, whether it be in this oracle, other oracles, tarot decks, whatever, the fire dragons, the ones that are able to wield the fire, the lava, the flame, can really burn out and clear out at a high frequency those lower vibrational energies and blocks. They are fantastic support. And if your personal uh, dragon, the dragon who has adopted you and owns you, because they own us, we don't own them. They don't belong to us, we belong to them. If it happens to be a dragon, you feel that fire and that passion. Yes, Taurus is an earth zodiac. However, we are much more than just our sun signs we have different elements and the the dragons did not go oh that one's a taurus we can't go there if your personal dragon happens to be a fire dragon you understand that passion that fire that flame and that heat will clear it out if you do not have a personal dragon or you, you haven't connected into the dragons you can call on a fire dragon to help you clear out well anything and everything that slows you down to help burn out some of these energies and it takes these energies a little while to kind of build up and connect in again. That fire dragon is giving you some reprieve and is going to help you out. Let's go on to the last part of the week. What blessing can my Taurus friends embrace at the end of the week? The Golden Atlantean Dragon helps you remember the wisdom of the Golden Atlantis. He's more than that. The Golden Atlantean Dragon, the Golden Dragon, can of course connect you into that past lost information, that wisdom. It can also help you connect in to your past lives so that you're able to kind of tap in and pick out experiences and information, skills and abilities that you once had however did not bring with you when we were incarnated we chose skills and abilities those building blocks of ourselves we couldn't take them all some of them we had to leave the golden atlantean dragon can help kind of clarify and bring stuff forward for you a fantastic piece especially given we're getting up and we're starting to put those um, feet together and making some movement Let's look at any final so thoughts. What further guidance and support can we give my Taurus friends to overcoming the challenges of the week and embracing the energies that the week offers them? The first one, the King of Cups. We have brothers divided here. The King of Wand or the King of Swords is our um, one of our obstacles. The King of Cups is saying, "Oh hell no!" That High Priestess, she knows what she's talking about. He's the King of Emotion and Intuition. He can find stability in the roughest seas. When your emotions are all over the place, and let's be honest, we're going to be faced with those obstacles. Rather than fighting this knowledge and resistance with emotion you control that emotion calling on that 
King of Cups, that very stable energy to control it. So you're fighting knowledge with critical thinking because general knowledge cannot stand up to critical thinking skills. And with him, his son, the Knight of Cups, giving you that energy, that courage, that determination to literally drink from the cup, drinking from the Holy Grail, taking yourself further and feeling that determination to really get that three of wands ignited. You're literally starting to connect in and utilize your chakras here. You have that root system that we're starting to create through this stability that the uh, emperor wants us to create. The universe really is, is knocking across our heads. Then you're taking in that sacral, that emotional security. Your sacral chakra deals with emotional regulation and that's what we're really going to find, that that emotional regulation is going to be key. And then of course, we've got the knight and we've got a couple um, wands there. That solar plexus, that big connection in to your courage and determination. And we go up to our heart chakra because this is all about emotion, especially love and intuition. So we've got that heart chakra connected in. And then we can connect in also your throat chakra, which is communication. We have the high priestess there. And then finally our crown, which is a connection to the universe. The high priestess, the, the galactic dragon, we've got the cups here. That energy flow is going to be really key and vital for this process for you. And the final piece of information, the Ten of Pentacles, the family card. That family, yes, may, some may not understand us and may challenge us on stuff. We have to remember that this is not all your family that's gonna challenge you. It may feel like it's everybody because you're gonna have some very positive supports start to challenge you and your belief system and what changes you're bringing into your life. Connecting in, and like I said, taking the high road, acknowledging where they're at, in their journey and acknowledging where you're at on your journey. This support system also connects into your astral and your spiritual family. Those people and beings that have been incarnated with you who are your guides, many of them have been incarnated and have worked with us and are part of our astral family. That connection in is going to be key. Working with those supports to really bring about some of the shifting that you're looking for. We also have a double that I didn't mention. We've got the, the brothers here, the, the double kings. Kings are the 14th card in the minor arcana. So when you see those double 14 numbers come up, the angels are telling you that this symbolizes a time of love and spiritual growth. The angels are singing and reinforcing my guidance on taking the high road that high vibrational loving energy, acknowledging where they're at and acknowledging where you're at. We're not always at the same place at the same time. We'll end off on a blessing. What blessing can my Taurus friends embrace for the week of January 5th through the 11th? The water and earth dragon creates that foundation for new growth. I won't lie, cards have a tendency to nail it on the head. What you're doing this week, my Taurus friends, creating foundation for that new growth. That earth water is amazing. Earth is that grounded energy, water, that nurturing, life-giving source. I want to thank you so much for spending time with me today and watching this video. I hope that you found this video fun and helpful and that you were able to gain some direction and insight into what the week holds for you. If you like this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for the latest content. As you can see, not only the universe is starting off with some major changes, so am I. 
my channel will continue to evolve and add in new content and amplify existing content. So the best way to stay connected is through subscribing to my channel and hitting that red bell so you don't miss any of this amazing healing and guidance that the universe and the high vibrational beings has for us. Also, if you enjoyed this video and want to support me in making more, I have a Patreon page with many tiers and lots of perks. In some of the tiers, the perks are private readings with myself. I provided a helpful link below, so why not go check it out? Until tomorrow, my Taurus friends.